In this video, we are going to start taking a look at assemblies and eventually move into our corridor design. Now, assemblies help us define the road cross section. Now, what do I mean by road cross section? If we took a backhoe and dug across a road, straight across the road, what does that road look like from viewing it from that side, from within the hole? Now, I have a picture of a road here. In the middle here, we have the center line. So this is the middle of the road. And in Canada, most parts of the world, this will be the high point of the road. On one side, we have a travel lane. So this is where you drive. And on the other side, again, is the travel lane. These are usually the same width. Outside, outside of the travel lane, we have what's called a shoulder. I'll just label it with an S here. And on this side, we have a shoulder as well. Now, we could have more than one travel lane. We could have two, three, four travel lanes on each side. And of course, if that happens, the configuration of the road where the high point is, where they're split, will be different depending on the road. Outside of the shoulder, we have a ditch. Or it could be a curb and gutter or it could be some other, other object to divert the water. So we will have a ditch. And beyond the ditch, wherever our road finishes its design, wherever the design goes and touches existing ground, we call daylight. So this will be the very outer extents of our road. On this side as well, this one just goes down the hill but we could have a ditch on this side as well with daylight on the opposite end. So when I use the word daylight, I mean the very outer edges of the road design. This will be the extents limit of your project on the outside. We'll have a ditch on the inside or curb and gutter, depending if you're in the city or out in a rural road. We'll have a road shoulder, we'll have travel lanes, and that is how we're gonna define our road. Now, before we can create a road, we need a few items in our drawing. We'll need an alignment. We'll need a profile with a design profile as well. So we can't attach our road to the existing ground. We can't attach the corridor to the existing ground because that's gonna make a big mess. And it's not gonna give us what we want. I'm just gonna freeze some of this stuff off here. And we're gonna use this, just this alignment from the previous drawing when we go to build it. So we have an alignment, we have a design ground, and we need an existing surface. We need something to follow along to compare our volumes to when we get into that aspect. Now, under the Prospector tab, we have nothing under Assemblies. We have nothing under Corridors, Intersections, and we'll get into that. So under the Corridors dropdown, I'm gonna select Create Assembly. I'm gonna name this, name it what it is. So if you're doing a specific road, name it a specific road. If it's for a specific piece of road, say 50th Avenue, I'm just gonna name it 50th Avenue Assembly. When we start getting into more complicated roads, we need to expand the right side, we need to expand the left side, we need to target things. It, naming these definitely will help you. Assembly type. We have a couple different options here. An undivided crown road. So an example of undivided would be this picture here. This road is not divided. Undivided planar road, which means the road is just 0%. It's flat on the top. Then we have a divided crown road. So this would be two separate travel directions with a grass meeting in the middle of some kind. Divided planar road would be the same thing except flat. We have a railway and then we have other. For this example, we are going to just do, do an undivided crown road. Our assembly style, our code set for an assembly or a code set for a corridor. I'm just gonna use assembly. It's gonna place it on a layer and hit okay. Now I'm gonna click in my drawing and I'm gonna make note of where I clicked because as soon as we zoom out, you can see the assembly marker there. However, these are very easy to lose if you have a lot of things in your drawing. 
So I'm just going to draw a circle around it. But Civil 3D will zoom you into it, and we're left with a green line and a blue marker. Now, when we're talking about assembly, this blue marker, the blue circle, the very center of that circle will follow your alignment and your vertical profile. So this square dot is going to track along your alignment and profile. It is possible to inadvertently move these. So just be careful, otherwise you're gonna mess your, your assembly up, your design is gonna be off a little bit, potentially a lot if you inadvertently move that. Also, if you look over in tool space now, we have a 50th Avenue assembly along with a baseline. So we've defined a center point and a center point only. That's not gonna help us here. We need to start building these little pieces. So I'm gonna type in the command tool palettes and that'll bring up my tool palette assemblies. I believe if you go to your home ribbon, it's this button here, tool palettes. And this final one is properties. But keep in mind, the more things you have open, the slower your software is going to run. Now we can start building our road with these pieces. I'm just gonna quickly go through some of these tabs and explain a few bits and pieces. We have basic assemblies. Now I can click on this and place it into the drawing and it's gonna give me a predefined road. So let's take a look at that quickly. I'm gonna drop my basic assembly in and it's given me a couple driving lanes, a curb and gutter, a sidewalk, and then to target existing ground. If we do a divided highway, we have a median in the middle, uh, one travel lane, some shoulders, and uh, some ditches. So Civil 3D comes pre-shipped with a couple of simple assemblies here, but none of which we're gonna use. If we look under the basic tab, here's a bunch of basic pieces, basic lanes, basic curb and gutters, basic barriers, basic sidewalks. These pieces are good if you don't need to do any expansions or contractions of your road. You don't need to extend it for a travel lane. You don't need to go around a corner. You don't need to, I mean, corner by uh, from one road to another road. If you don't need to super elevate, you don't need to perform any of the fancy analysis, these pieces would be great. We have lanes. Now these are when we get into the smart pieces. So lane super elevation AOR. This piece will allow super elevation. So I'm gonna select this piece and I'm gonna look at the options that it's given me in properties. So this is gonna be built on the right side. It's 3.6 meters wide, it's minus 2%, two pavement depths, uh, sub base depth and sub, -ba sub base depth. If you wanna super elevate, you have to tell it which side you want it, which piece you want it to be slope direction away from crown. Just take a look at your options. And then I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna click the blue circle. This places that piece into my drawing. If I click lane super elevation again, I can apply this to the left side. Although I'm going to delete that for now because I build one half and then I copy and paste it over. Now, if you're working in the city, you would use curb and gutters different curb and gutter pieces. And if you wanna know anything about any of these pieces, right click help, takes you to the help file, explains what all the different um, dimensions are, all the links, all the numbers, you can type in your information. If you're working outside of the city, we, we use what is called a shoulder. Now a shoulder extend all pieces or shoulder extend sub base. I'm just gonna throw the extend all, take a look at the options, Simple click. And then daylight. So this is how you, the, your road design eventually ties into the existing ground. I just click daylight basin. So in areas of cut, it will build a ditch. In areas of fill, it's gonna build a bench and target existing ground down. So we don't wanna build a ditch when we're building the road up above ground. And again, this is just a simple, quick assembly to show you how these pieces tend to work. I'm gonna select these three pieces now because we've defined half the road. I'm gonna right click, mirror. The mirror command, if you type in mirror, will not work. You have to right click mirror. Likewise, there's a right click move to, right click copy to. So right click mirror, I'm gonna select this, the blue, the blue uh, circle. 
for the centerpiece and mirror this to the other side. And finally, we can take a look at the assembly properties here and see here, there's our style, construction, so it's an undivided crown road. If you mess that up, you can come in here and change it. On the right-hand side, we have a lane, a shoulder, a daylight. On the left-hand side, we have a lane, a shoulder, and a daylight. You can change the options in here as well. One final thing here, there has been a bug within Civil 3D when you go to put a piece in. So if I say I click lanes, it won't allow me to type anything in this properties window. As soon as I click in here, I'll get about a millisecond to type something in and then it will kick me out of the properties window. And it seems to come and go. However, put the piece in with the default information, right click sub assembly properties. You can even go in that way and change the information in this window right here and it will update. So again, that was a quick run through of creating a simple assembly. You may have to create more than one. In the next video, we're going to be applying this to a corridor.